Dan, thank you so much for coming back on. And uh, I'm uh, I'm really happy to have you on after what you've just been doing, because I've been watching all the way over from Australia. I was actually re- I was actually watching your entire run on that um, that uh, the tracker. It was such a cool uh-huh. piece, piece of piece of kit. But how's your how's your recovery going? Have you been running recently? Oh yeah, I've been running. Yeah, I find it I find it hard not to run. Yeah, so I think I had like six days of of not running, and then I I started up again, just like slowly at first, like a bit of walking, a bit of running, and then so about three or four days of that, and then and now I'm back. Yeah, I'm back like an hour, an hour or so a day I'm doing. So yeah, yeah, so I feel the, okay actually. So those are that are probably picking up this uh, episode like you ran from land's end to john o'groats which is a full distance of i don't want to get i'm going to let you answer that because i don't want to get it wrong yeah but i don't really know what it is it's around eight eight hundred and thirty miles yeah 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 yeah. so and you did it in nine you did it in nine days but you'd attempted it before um Mm. and this time you actually got it is the world record it is now the record of what of that distance yeah, yeah, I beat Richard Brown, Richard Brown's time. I think he set it in nineteen ninety five or something. So yeah, yeah, and it's I been a, it's been officially you. officially recognised now. Well, it's not been officially recognised because I this is my thing. I l- last time we um we did all of like the official like Guinness stuff and and this time round um we didn't. It's too much for the crew to do. So right, um, okay. we didn't do it. We were just like, we just want to run and it's not important. Um, we know if we've done it and it, it's not important if it's not official in Guinness's eyes. I mean, Guinness, uh, who are they? Uh, yeah. why, I, I don't understand why they're in charge of, uh, they're just a, like a so brand. True. It's just an advertising tool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't feel like, yeah, it means any more to, to be there we're like we did it so it's fine yeah that's so true actually yeah i never thought of that that the guinness world records i mean it's just literally a, a label on the front isn't it if you've, yeah, you've done yeah. it the fastest you've done it the fastest like that's yeah there's no uh yeah. there's no getting around that um mm-hmm. so what what did it feel like well actually let's talk about the prep so your prep leading up to it like what was your prep like going into it because you'd attempted it I'm not sure how long ago it was since you you it had was the, almost, the attempt. It was almost two years to the to the day. I think maybe yeah. So yeah, maybe like a week or so out either either side. But yeah, it was like a full two years. Yeah. Since so when I, you I tried it before, when you'd finished the last one, how um how did you feel about the last one, and how where was your sort of mind at after? not having not finishing it not being able to get the time that you want you wanted and 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 get the record in that two years what was going on in your mind uh yeah i think i i think i always wanted to go back and and finish it off um but i don't think i i really realized that myself until like a year after i i finished um the one that i well I, the one that i didn't manage to to complete um so it was only like a year ago that I decided, right, I wanna I want to do it again. I'm like I'm like ready to do it again. The first one took a lot out of me actually. Like I I it it must have been like three or four months it took me to like fully recover from, from the first one. I think I my my body took a bit of a, a bit of a battering. Um I mean I did stop because I had some weird thing going on where I was retaining fluid and I was like I was puffing up my hands, my face, my stomach, like all over me was kind of puffing up. So I think, I, yeah, I did take a, physically a bit of a battering and maybe mentally as well. And it, yeah, it did take me a long time to recover. So yeah, until I was fully recovered, I, I didn't really think about going back and, and, and trying to do it again. But um, but yeah, a year or so ago, I was like, yeah, we de- I definitely want to go back and I want to, yeah, I want to complete it this time. So so does it does it take a year worth of training to kind of get up to it? I don't know. I think it's a it's a hard one, like a kind of journey like this, because it's. I think if you run like any other ultra race, like a, a hundred mile race or a hundred k race, you really can 
you can kind of specifically train for it and have like a training, like a few month training block that's kind of right for that race. But it's really hard. I don't think you can train in like a training block for something like this. I think you Mm. just have to kind of look at your training block as like 10 years and like everything you've done in the last 10 years is kind of, kind of prepares yourself for this, you know, like all of the, yeah. all of the miles you kind of put in your legs, uh, uh, make you ready to be able to, I don't know, just put that amount of miles in your legs, like for, for nine days, I think. So, yeah, I, I don't think you can, I, in fact, I probably did less miles than I've, I've done for a good few years in the in the build up to this in the in the few months before I, I I took this on yeah. So what you what were you kind of averaging on a daily basis of mileage? I know we don't. I actually asked you that in our previous chat, and I think you were saying like you would average around twenty miles, sort of one hundred and forty a, a week. Yeah, so I dropped right down now. There's there's um, I'm I'm probably not even doing a hundred miles a week these days yeah i'm, I'm doing it i'm doing a lot less yeah i mean so, yeah, just not 100 yeah miles. but i do yeah i feel better for it i feel as fit but i feel like fresh much fresher you know a lot a lot less tired and uh so yeah i do i do feel much better yeah. so there's definitely something in that then like the fact that you're given probably more recovery for your body and uh not thinking about mileage has your because i know you use running as a med like a meditative technique so how's your how's your mind dealing with maybe not doing as many miles as you were to then bringing it back down did you struggle with pulling yourself back from training quite a lot or like Um, running just just running quite a lot no no it was fine because i don't i think the I still, yeah, running is really important to me in, in terms of my head and like my like the stillness in my mind. And but I don't think that the amount of running makes that much difference. I just think the kind of consistency is what I is what I need. And in whereas like running brings me that stillness and that calmness in my mind, sometimes the element of training, especially a lot of runners will will agree and maybe like other sports people you you have an element of like o c d around your training like it it's almost yeah. like you feel like you need to run hundred and forty miles in a week to like to be like fit enough to run a race and you you get kind of caught up on on numbers and stuff like that so all i my simple thing to to like to change that is i just yeah i only wear a watch now if i'm doing a session where i need to know what my pace is where i'm doing like a speed session or a so i just stop wearing my watch completely and then i have no idea how many miles i do a week so all of a sudden oh wow it just doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's really simple. So <laughs> that's dangerous for you, Dan, because you could run for thirty miles and not know. <laughs> yeah, well, and the my coach was like kind of changed. So rather, it used to be go out and run twenty miles, or go out, and then he just put a he changed it and he just put a time on it. Go out and run for two hours. So I've just it's nice. I've no idea how how far I've gone. You know, you have a like you have a vague idea because you know the routes you're going and you kind of know what distance but yeah there's no chance to get hooked up on like numbers and oh I've only done 132 miles this week I need to now I need to do 140 you know it's it so Mm. it it just makes it a lot a lot easier and and in it, it makes running like more meditative because you just don't you're just running you yeah. know you're not training you don't have your watch on you're not you're not clocking the kilometers you're not really paying attention to your to your pace you're just you're just running um, yeah i've found that um so since i actually last saw you i've now started doing more running myself like more long distance running so i'm probably doing 50 to 60k a week um really putting in a lot more distance than i'd ever done before i think even when i ran the ma- i ran a marathon i think the most i'd ever done in a week was 25k and i really undercooked it for a marathon <laughs> so um 
I found, <laughs> but I was actually having this thought to myself, like when I run, I run with my earphones in and I have an audio book going, usually I have an audio book because as much as I want to try and read and I want to try and sit down and read, like I've found that I actually intake information when it comes from the voice of someone or I can hear it and I can understand maybe there's a story behind it. So when I'm listening to an audio book, I actually kind of drift off a little bit when I'm running. So I actually run away from, I, I run out of that pain and that discomfort that I'm in and it does become a little bit more meditative. But I have been th- sitting there thinking to myself going like, God, how mad is it that you? Some most of us will train with like a device and feel like we need that device to like get us out on the road and running when actually like just running without anything on would be so sort of blissful and and you're sort of really in the exercise and the workout for what it is so i kind of reckon i feel like i I will actually get up to that and i'll start doing that because um yeah i just felt like you know maybe i've got too many distractions and and uh and uh, it's like but you're right there are days where you're pacing it there are days where you're pacing it and and Uh I, i do need to know what pace i'm doing yeah yeah i i don't this i don't like to sound but i yeah, when I see runners with like headphones in, it always, I don't know what the word is because it's not disappoints me. It's not, um, I just know that like, especially like new runners that you see, because like during the lockdown, you saw a lot of new runners about, which is wonderful, you know, like maybe like like 50% more people were out on the like the, the little footpath around Shoreham and stuff around the river. And it's it's wonderful, but it, I, I I see runners out with their headphones on and it I just want them to ex I feel like they're missing out on what running like what running can give them because like it some when you run and when you get especially when you get out of the kind of city or out of the town and you're in nature, then it's there's not many times we get to really like switch off from everything is there you know like mm. like most yeah. of the time we have our phone on us or most of the time like somewhere in the background there's like there's like a radio on or there's a, a television on so we're, there's information that always kind of like feeding into us we're always like connected to something and and sometimes like when you run it's and you don't take your phone with you and you don't oh it's just a real chance to like check out of like normal life a normal society and, and just mm. yeah just be there in that stillness and and sometimes i think I, I i get a bit conspiratorial and sometimes i think it's a trick from the government that to like tell runners that they need to wear you know you need to still be connected when you're running because yeah. i think you're because <laughs> when you're not connected when you don't have your earphones in and you're you like you're so much freer, you know, you're, you're away from everything else. So, um, yeah, I, I'd like recommend to everyone to, to get to the point where you just don't need, yeah, you don't need to have things in your ears or even take your phone with you when you run. It's just, it's your time and it's just your time to be with you and with like nature, you know? Yeah. I think that's actually a really good point because, the, the one thing I think people misunderstand as well is the pace that you have to, that if you're training for like a marathon, like the easy pace that you're meant to run to get your real base fitness up, they, there's a misunderstanding of like the every workout needs to be hell for leather and you need to be up at 80% of your heart rate. You need to be panting, you need to be sweating, you need to be like gone by the time you're finished when actually you should be able to hold a conversation whilst you're running. And that's not a quick pace at whatever level you're at. So you could have a a very, very fast marathon runner and their easy pace will be very quick, but it's all relative to wherever your fitness is at. And I think that's that's the thing I found is like the actual being able to slow down and take in what's going on. I never really, I mean, I'm pretty blessed here in Adelaide. There's a, a beautiful run that I can do. It's about 16, 21 K, 16 to 21 K run that's all along the seafront and they're even extending it all along and like the scenery like down when the sun's setting and stuff like that and i do actually find myself taking my earphones out and just hearing like the waves crashing the the like the people that are around like the sea the 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 dogs that are running around on the beach and just you're taking in the scenery and then you're kind of like well now this is 
this is now for my mind more than anything. And funny enough, I was, um, I've had a lot of work going on with, with coaching and building the app at the moment. And, and I have to do something every day. That is my time. Like that is like you said, it's your time to check out for the day. And, uh, I was texting someone and, and I was like, oh, I've got a load of work to do. And it's like, well, maybe you should actually not go for a run and, and you should do the work. I was like, no, because if I don't go for that, then that's ruined that it's actually going to ruin the work because then I'll be in an agitated state for the rest of the day thinking I've got to do it like I've had days where I've got to like 10 11 12 even one o'clock in the morning and I know I haven't even done my yoga for the day and I'm like I'm not even getting it on that pillow until I've done what I'm doing and I think that's the the sportsman routine in me like I have to have something going on but I think that should be it's a good mindset to get in it's it's understanding that exercise is so good for your mental space more than anything and and then past that you you it then starts to become a routine um that's where i've found especially with with running recently like realizing that the pace at which you have to go isn't as fast and you can take in so much more around you it's it's um it's amazing yeah it's interesting you say that because like yeah like what you were talking about that because i yeah, I'm totally the same. Like I need, I need to do something. Yeah, and I need to, uh, I need to run. I need to do my yoga. I need to, and um, yeah, and it does become habit. Um, but then sometimes I worry. You maybe I'll ask you a question that like, sometimes because it becomes habit, it comes routine, and it's healthy. Just but gonna then, hold on, Dan. So, the audio has just gone a little bit funny. A sec. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, just it might be your earphones or something that's just. Maybe, maybe. If I push there we go. There we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You were saying about asking yeah. a question. Oh yeah, yeah. That. Um, yeah. It sounds like we're kind of the same, you know. That I, I, I need to run. I need to do my yoga. It, like it, it, it makes a difference to my day. You know, it really does make a difference. And it's almost like, and it's a nice routine to get in. It's a nice habit to be in. But is it? Like I often ask myself the question, like where does it tip from being like a like a healthy routine to something that's like unhealthy and like slightly addictive? I don't know. Yeah, I I think it borderlines, doesn't it? I always sit there and I borderline yeah. and and I think like, oh, maybe I'm um maybe I'm a bit mad for doing it this way. And and then you're like, well, geez, am am I is it meant am I mentally stable or am I mentally unstable for for thinking like this? And yeah. <laughs> um, but I I know that it keeps me. The thing that I talk about probably the most with whether it's training or is the just the consistency, like you said, the consistency of being able to go out. I know if I'm consistent in the amount of times that I'm training, then I'm consistent in my mood. I'm consistent in how I'm interacting with people. I'm mm-hmm. consistent in everything that I'm doing. And that consistency, even so, even when we were looking, if you look into professional sport, like even a team sport, high end sport, people, the whole idea of like fear of failure and like you're going to fail. One of the biggest eye openers I ever had was like the amount of down days that I'm going to have, the amount of bad days that I will have. But the idea is like the best performers throughout their career are the ones that not because they had a bad game, it's because they, they, the, lows and highs that they had weren't as drastic so if they were down they weren't really down if they were high they didn't get like really high they were just very consistent they kept that way very consistent and then they knew themselves through their behaviors their their routines whatever it was that allows them to stay in that consistency and that's what i just try to do i try to make sure that everything i do is as consistent as it can possibly be um, with obviously tweaks along the way, like there's a part of you that will always try to improve something just to make sure that that there's an upward curve, um, so that you are getting better, but at the same time, you're not like, you're not seeing these huge downs and everything that's bad is really bad. And then when you're up, it's just amazing. And yeah, that's, that's the thing I found for more mental side as well. Yeah. Yeah. That makes complete sense. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to actually move on to the run, your your run that you you've just done. So, um, what was the you talked about you about being a year out away from from it and starting to think about it and getting yeah then probably getting the fire back in your belly to do it. But what was the actual prep that you you've done leading up just before? So, what was it actually that you learned from the last one that 
probably didn't get you where you wanted to be just just didn't get you over the line what was it you felt that needed tweaking and and uh what what was it that you changed uh so me personally so um let me just say so first of all i had my coach with me uh robbie as well as my partner and uh uh my friend mick as support but what robbie had done um so last time i simply just typed in land and to john groats on google and just pressed the walking route that was basically my uh <laughs> how I navigated around but uh Robbie this time round had uh like really looked into it he's very good like that and he'd 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 mapped out the route um like really well so found like you know like tiny little shortcuts down little trails and and found like you know a little bit of trail maybe like a mile of trail when we could have still been on the dual carriageway just to you know just to take you off that kind of noisy road for a little bit so so that side of it was was a lot was a lot better my route seemed to be a lot better and then like me personally i i kind of had this idea that I, the more i run the more i realized that like it running's just i mean it sounds silly but it's just momentum it's just you start running and if as far as I can work out with me, if I start running at, you know, like a three, three forty-five per kilometre pace, and I, I can, it's quite easy just to sustain it as long as you just keep going at that at that pace. Your kind of body will like click into that pace and just keep going. And so, what I said to myself is, I'm just at the start of each day. I'm going to start running, and like I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'll, if I have to grab food, I'll stop and like walk for like a hundred meters, but then I'll get going again. I just wanted to keep that momentum like going the, like the whole time or the whole day. And, um, so we did that on the, like on the first day and it was just, it, it just worked. It worked so well. Like I think you expend more energy stopping like starting again even even like walking you expend more energy rather than just like clicking into that certain pace that you need to be running and just kind of stay at that efficient pace so that was like the big difference like I didn't stop at all and like take even like two or three minute breaks and and it meant that we finished the days a lot quicker obviously and yeah. then there was so much more time to recover ready for the next day so you actually found that you were just going fundamentally harder for the time you were you were actually moving and then just gave you that bigger period to recover yeah i wasn't even running harder i was just consistent i was like we say i was just running and not stopping so last time around i'd have like a lunch break you can like stop and sit and eat and and when I, if I was feeling a bit tired towards the end of the day, I might stop and have a 10 minute power nap and then get back up and run. And all of those little things, just if you add them all together, it, it can be like an hour, two hours that you're adding on to your, yeah. to your time. And I think having that bigger chunk of time to recover was like a real game changer. Yeah. So what were you, um, what sort of things were you eating? What was the stuff that you were fueling yourself with? So just energy, like it was quite hot actually. It was like the hottest. It was a heat um, wave. <laughs> it was like chose the time to do it. I mean, for England, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but when it, that that's quite good for me because I don't I like sun and and blue sky just like it just floods me with energy, you know, so I mean, you know that, like, yeah. it, it, like blue sky compared yeah. to gray sky, it just, it just lifts you, you know, it just um, lifts your life force. So, so yeah, I'm quite happy about that. And also it, it's hot. So I'm thirsty. So I, I, I want to drink more and that's better because like most of the stuff I was drinking was like energy, some sort of energy drink so I'm, I'm getting uh calories in through through drinking yeah and I t to be honest i can't really remember what i was i was just whatever charlotte gave me it was like 
sandwiches and <laughs> maybe the odd bit of pasta here and there and flapjacks and yeah you know, just yeah it was just a mixture of all sorts of different things you know <laughs> just uh yeah that I was putting in so was there because you you had a few people running with you as well you usually have some mm. support runners so how far I mean how far was each day that you were running like what were you mapping out each day uh yeah the first day was just under 100 miles and then after that there was it, most of them were like 80 around like 85 roughly like on average about 85 miles um a day wow yeah okay so that's not and how many are the support runners doing Oh, it's, well, it's brilliant, the support runners. It, like, they're, you know, they just come out. I suppose they're just watching the kind of my tracker uh, to where I am. And you just get you just get some, like, really, yeah, just lots of people turning up. And some people will, like, meet you on a, like, a lay-by of, like, a dual carriageway and run 500 metres with you and just say, well done, and, and then jog back to their car. <laughs> and then other people will turn up. And you're like, oh, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And you'll say to them, oh, how, how far, you know, how long have you got? Or how long are you going to run with us today? And they'll be like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe 80k or something. Wow. I mean, so some people stay, yeah, some people stay for a long, long time, and and others are just there for, yeah, for for, for not so long. But it's, I think it's, I don't know if I ever mentioned it last time, but it's the best thing about uh, running running that particular journey it's the people you meet and the the runners that come out and support you are just it just makes it really special Um, so when you're when you're running with them are you chatting with them are you are you sort of or you zoned it zoned out because i know you can get zoned out when you run like my brother's i think i told the story last time about your your seven days on the treadmill and you were like zoned out and completely not not contacting people around you (laughs) Yeah, um, yeah, I'm chatting uh, some of the time, some of the time I'm not. But what what we were saying this time round, it was almost for the not to get too airy fairy, but it it was almost like the universe was really looking after us because, like, at each particular time, support runners or support runner kind of turned up. They they seemed to be the right person for that particular time you know so they were really different but it, they always seem to be the right person for the right time and uh like yeah you you were saying like do you do you chat that much do you and i think like towards the end of the run obviously you're you're more tired so you're you're chatting less but i think what you start to notice <laughs> but it's funny because you don't really you don't really look in the eyes of the support runners, you know, because they're just running alongside you. Or a lot of the time with me, I like to look at like what's in front of me. So a lot of the time they're running behind me because we're on a dual carriageway. So you can't be running really like two, two of breath. And what you start to wow. feel towards the end, I think you, you become like more in tune with like their, rather than like what you're chatting, but their energy. And it is, it's really nice, man. There's there's some people who come out and they just have this, like, really like protective energy, and you can feel it. You know, you can feel it that they're they're there, they're there to really uh, like to really help and support you. And then there's others, like that come out and their energy is just like a real, it's just really calming. Or there's others that have a, like a real like um, upbeat energy, and you can kind of feed off it. So you kind of um, yeah, I found it really helpful, like feeding off the different runners' energies and 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 how they kind of felt, kind of running behind me. I love how you said that the the right runner came on along at the right time. Almost that sounds quite mm. that sounds really nice. What's the terrain like that you're running on? So you were saying there that you're doing a dual carriageway, which is, can't be massively <laughs> safe all the time. But then, were there any areas like in? I mean, we're talking about the entire length of the uk but was is there any areas that you knew that were going to come up that were going to be challenging were there areas that were potentially challenging that you didn't know about or what what were the sort of the challenges or the interesting parts of of the run that were a bit complicated so 
like to to like achieve like the fastest time you you really have to go the fastest route and pretty much like the fastest route from like across the country is using the a roads uh and so pretty much the majority of what you're doing is on dual carriageways or like really busy a roads so there's we had one little section in scotland where you come off for about 15 k 10 miles or so and and you cut across like some some nice uh sort of hills sort of thing that actually they were really boggy when we went across them so, um so we can't make it through bogs but yeah the majority of the time it, it is a road um with like lots of lorries and lots of cars and and yeah you kind of you just kind of hug that white line on the on the kind of slower lane and just hope that the lorries don't get too close to you no. <laughs> um and um, what was it, what was it like as you're getting because there is some beautiful i think as you start getting up towards scotland there's some beautiful scenery um but i i saw a thing and there was a there was someone who was going alongside you taking some amazing um images and some footage as well along along the way and um Actually, one of the images that, or the videos I saw was you being like carried in and out of a house like, after a day. Like you, you just <laughs> looked broken. When whenabouts was that? Uh, yeah, that was um, the second to last day, I think. Yeah, luckily we'd found um, we we put it on Facebook or something if someone had a bath that I could use in in Aviemore in Scotland and this chap no had, uh, responded <laughs> and said yeah yeah you can come and because it seemed to be helping my recovery to like get in a bath and um yeah it just kind of relaxed my muscles a little bit and so Mick who was one of my support one of my crew I think from like the, uh, maybe from like the sixth day or something when i'd finished running mick was like literally carrying me everywhere <laughs> it was um i don't know it's hard because your body's brilliant isn't it and it realizes what it's got to do so maybe like that day to avonmore i had to run maybe like 85 or so miles and as soon as you get to the place where you need to be it's almost like then it just it just stops working because it knows it doesn't need to work. So it was so from like after running like 85 miles and then stopping, it was so hard for me to even walk that Mick was just picking me up most of the time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and carrying me the places I needed to go. Uh, but maybe that was nice and effective because then, uh, it, again, that helped in recovery, but yeah, it was fair play that chap who let us come into his house. Cause I, you know, I remember getting in the bath and then, when I got out of the bath, it was like, you know, I was like half, I half fainted on his bathroom floor. And then, and then that made me feel real sick. So I was like dry heaving in his, in his bathroom sink. And then, and then we just left. Yeah. So, wow, nice yeah. Um, I mean, fair play to him. <laughs> fair play. How much sleep yeah. are you getting what, each night? Yeah, I was getting enough. I think I was getting like, like, if you talk about like proper sleep, maybe I was getting like three, three hours or so, like like oh, actual okay. sleep, because it takes a, like it just takes a while for your for your legs to calm down enough to for you to sleep. So it takes a good right. few hours. For, I don't know if you're, I don't know what it is whether they're relaxing. Sometimes I think you stop running, but your legs take another two hours to stop running themselves, you know, to kind of just let go. And, and, and it's really hard to sleep when your legs haven't had that time to, um, it's just, it's just painful, basically your legs, your legs hurt so much that you, you can't sleep. Um, yeah. but after a while that kind of subsides a little bit and, and then you are able to get some sleep. So yeah, I was getting enough sleep. Yeah, it was okay. It's so having a bath, was it a warm bath that you're having? Yeah, I can't handle that. There was yeah. one night I had I had a warm one and then I like had like an ice one and then had a warm one again. But it just seemed to if I could get in a bath within like half an hour of finishing, it just seemed to 
it just seemed to work. I don't know. It was it just allowed my muscles to relax a bit more. But it had to be a warm one, yeah. But sometimes yeah. too warm. Like the the day before, I completely passed out getting out uh, getting out of the bath. Yeah, just uh, yeah, collapsed getting out. So sometimes I was going too too warm in the bath. <laughs> um i wanted to talk about like just coming up towards the end of it like as you're coming towards the end of the run um how you felt actually i know your parents were near the end as well so how it felt for you just as you were getting towards the end like more i think probably more emotionally as you did you know as you were getting towards the end that you were going to do it yeah so i had a the penultimate day was my only kind of real blip. I had in the afternoon of that penultimate day, I just things, I I lost. I don't know. It was it, I was fueling all right. I was eating all right. I was I wasn't injured in any way. I was just really low on, like I don't know what to call it. I've like chi, like life force, like energy. Yeah. You know, it was just it was just. I just found it hard to keep that momentum going. So I, I stopped. I tried to sleep. I, you know, have a little bit of a power nap. It kind of worked. But then again, I, I felt really tired. So then we stopped for like three hours and I, I tried to have like a proper reset sleep. Um, then I got going again and it just wasn't working at all. Um, so then I I think we stopped at about uh, like one or so in the morning and I said I'd have another three hour sleep and and then try and get up and obviously finish it off I think there was another like 87 miles to go or something so I slept and it was oh it was the best night's the best three hours sleep I'd, I'd had the whole time it was I felt like I'd like like slept deeply for the first time and and I got up the next day like at four in the morning or so and and I, there was like a 10 minute bit where it was all a bit odd. I tried to start running and I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten how to transition from walking to running. It was bizarre. Yeah. I couldn't, it was, I couldn't work out how to start running. It was, oh, and um, my crew were there and I was saying, I can't, I can't do it. I can't remember how to do it. And it was just weird. And they, they kind of just left me to get on with it. And then I, I came up to like a little downhill bit and I started running. And as soon as I started running on that downhill bit, it, there was 87 miles to go, but I just knew it was like, I just knew I had, I had that feeling that I was just, it was all going to be all right. And so at, at that point I just knew I was going to make it. Yeah. It, I, yeah. All, all I had to do was run like 22 hours and i worked it out in my head just run, you know, slow, you know, not, not at any pace, just like pretty slow, but run for 22 hours and, and everything's going to be fine. So literally at like four in the morning on that last day. And I think we finished at like two in the morning, the next year, the next day or whatever. Like I just knew that it was going to be all right. Yeah. I just, just, just move. That's all what, I sort had to of do. Pace, what sort of pace are you running when you're doing it? Uh, I I think that last that uh, usually I'm not running it. Uh, it's maybe like ten k an hour, so it's like six miles an hour. It's not, but yeah. the last day I was down to like more like four and a half or something. I was going I was going pretty slowly, yeah. But wow. it didn't matter. Yeah, it was just and and it, it'd be interesting to see my pace because it would have just the graph would have just gone down, down, down towards that, like the last, yeah, five miles where I, where I was actually, so my mum was there, yeah, she turned up and then all of the crew, like in the last mile, they kind of walked, they parked at the sign and they walked up to, um, to like run in with me. And um, yeah, and I started, I'd, it was an uphill bit, I was walking and then we got, got to the downhill bit and I started running and I looked around and they were still walking so my running pace was the same as their their walking pace <laughs> <laughs> and that's how slow I got towards the end yeah so uh, yeah I realized I might as well just walk with them yeah and what was it like when you actually got to right to the end 
the point that you were looking to get to? Being, in all of those kind of runs, those longer runs, it's just like you always think it's going to be like really special and like a like a brilliant moment, you know, like. But it's just a real, it's a real anti-climax. Um, it, well, it is because, at, like I say, 22 hours earlier, I realised I was going to make it there. So you kind of, you kind of do the celebration in your head. Then you know you're like, yes, I've done it, I've made it. Everything's going to, yeah, you know, everything's going to be fine. And when you actually get to the sign, it's just. Oh right, that's done. Let's just get back to the hope. There is no emotion, and I think you're so tired as well. Is like your like emotion just takes energy, so your body kind of shuts down that that side of you. You don't really have emotion, you know. So it's just um, everything's kind of matter of fact. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. There wasn't any like big celebrations. I just touch a sign, sat down, and then got to a hotel and went to bed basically yeah so what happens to your body because that must it must take such a toll on your body um what happens to your body after that initial finish like so the next couple of days what's going on physically yeah i mean i it always it just amazes me how wonderful the kind of collaboration between your mind and body is because it your body just, I don't know, it just, it just knows, like, you get, so I get to the, after, so I'm running, like, nine days, yeah, and I finish day seven, and I don't, I don't feel that great, but my body's pretty good, it holds up for me, yeah, because it understands that I've got to run the next day, so I get up, and nothing swelled up that much, and I'm, I'm, you know, my ankles are fine, my, my, my blisters are fine, or whatever, but when you get, on that last day, when you get to the end, and, your your I don't know, your body realizes that that's it. You don't need to get up and run the next day. It's almost like it just breathes a big, like, sigh or something. And then like the next day you get up and you like it's ridiculous. Like my legs are like elephants. My ankles are huge. You know, either side. My feet are so swelled up I can't get them in my shoes. There's I hurt more than I've ever hurt before, and it's just amazing how your body holds it together when you when it knows you've got to get up and run the next day. But as soon as it, as soon as it knows that, that it's over, it kind of yeah, it just lets everything go. Basically, um, I, I find it. Yeah, I'm all, I'm eternally grateful to my body for for helping me out like that, and not uh, yeah. Imagine if I like on the last day if I, I got up and I my ankles were that and my legs are like that would be be dreadful yeah so, so yeah but go on. Is, is, is there is there anything that sort of you hone you hone into that sort of i got i know we've spoken a lot about recovery but uh, thinking about what you you've said is a lot of it is kind of trial this trial that this is what i kind of feel like today this is this is what i kind of my gut instinct is that i feel i need this um and I, I kind of have that sometimes. I kind of feel like, all oh, right, I really need to have a big sort of massage or I really need to have a big stretch into that or I really need to have an ice bath this day. I really feel like I need to have a hot bath this day. Do you kind of go along with that or is there a strategy that you have that you stick to? No, yeah, totally. Like you're saying, yeah, just listen to what your, yeah, what your body needs. Like I'd never... Yeah, like a few days afterwards, I I never like used a roll like a foam roller or anything like that. But I kind of, I just knew that I, my body like I needed to do it. Is that what I mean on, mm. on a certain part of my my legs and, um, but what I what I find really helps with your body and I know you do a lot of it as well is especially in terms of that recovery when when you are battered from a like a a race or something is. Like when I when I I try to do yoga like as soon as as soon as possible, because what I find that yoga does it it kind of gives you like a, like a, an an internal examination of yourself a little bit you know like you go mm. into certain postures and you can then you can really tell like 
if your right side is tighter than your left side or if little, and I, I find it's a really, it's almost like a, a check-in of like every part of your body to see which bits, you know, what, what's come out of it okay and, and what's, you know, like needs a bit of, uh, a bit of work. So yeah, I find that the yoga is like, all like essential, like in terms of recovery. And as soon as I start doing yoga, all it, everything starts i think it, it it increases the kind of rate of recovery you know I, that all my swelling starts to go down and i don't know maybe maybe it's about you know i'm getting the blood pumping around my body a bit more but i yeah you know, i find it important really important in recovery i also feel like if your mind and everything is slowing down and getting out of that real um, sympathetic state and that real stress state then you're naturally everything that is meant to be going on in a in a much more recovered state is going to happen. It's just going to start taking care of itself. It's going to, like you've been saying, the body is a the body and the mind is a wonderful thing. How if you can calm your mind down, it's so amazing how your body will follow and it will start doing these and almost vice versa as well. If your mind is stressed and you calm your body down, then your mind will calm down as well. So yeah, that's it's, it's a real like, like partnership that I think what you're talking about there is the self-awareness of it. So you get that. I think that was probably my my biggest point of doing yoga and movement and stretching was that it gave me the self-awareness to, to understand, right, my left side is so much worse than my, my right. So I need to take more care into that left side. Like I've got this bad dodgy hip that's been bothering me the last few weeks and I thought, oh my God, my knee's all out of whack. And But nah, I've just got to spend more time on my left than I do my right. So yeah, that self-awareness, that understanding and it, it strengthens that connection between your body and your mind. That's the, I keep keep yeah. pushing that for athletes. And and, um, mm-hmm. and I actually wanted to yeah, ask you about your, it. sorry, go on, go on. No, I was going to say, I don't know where there's anywhere else you could, you could, like find that way of getting to know your body as intimately as, as that. Do you know what I mean? Because I thought you could, like if you ran and didn't do yoga or didn't, then you just, you wouldn't be aware of that imbalance. You know what I mean, maybe you get mm. injured, but you just, I, I, I find it, you, it would just kind of pass you by, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's essential. Yeah. And, and as well, like it's, you know, like you can work on, I mean, not imbalances, but it's so good for your mind as well, isn't it? You know, you can really, you can really tell. I mean, yoga, you can really tell when you're stressed, and you might not have realised it when you when you're doing yoga. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Have you gone into much breathing like exercises for it to to help out your running? No, I've I have a friend. No, I I don't do that much. No, no, only within my yoga practice I've, i have a friend who um who's shown me some like qigong exercises before and uh yeah actually when i was running yeah. when i was running this time i was i was kind of like i was trying to like summon not summon but like increase that chi inside me by using some of the like breathing techniques and and that kind of hand movements he's he showed me um yeah um which kind of yeah, it seemed to work quite well, yeah. But I haven't done that much in in the way of breathing. No. Yeah, I think the most of what you you do is definitely mental, and the and the and the mental side of what you do is is I think you said it before in the the last podcast we did that it's definitely more more about your mind when you're doing the distances you're doing compared to your body will get there, but gee, your mind will be. Did you ever did you ever have any self doubt on the run? Do you have any any doubts or like thinking I'm I'm just not gonna get it or we we we're, we're not getting it at the moment? Yeah, I had no like real self doubt because I had this beautiful feeling the first the first night I well no yeah the first night we slept well before we started at Land's End I slept and I woke up that day that we were to start the journey and I just had this beautiful feeling like a like a like a huge like uh, warm hug from like, I, I don't know just just this energy this like I don't know like from the universe or something and it just 
I just knew everything was going to be fine. I mean, and that that feeling stayed with me throughout the whole the whole thing. And 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 it was only like that last day, no, the penultimate day, like a few hours in the afternoon, that penultimate day, when I kind of lost that feeling for a little bit. So then there was there was like a few hours of kind of self doubt, but then after that sleep that I talked about, it just all came back again. I was I was really, uh, yeah, I was really lucky like that. It was just you, it, everything was going to be all right the whole way through. Oh mate, I think it's. Uh, oh, I don't mate, want to take up too much of your time. But also, you I also re- saw that when you were running, you were running a big tie dye shirt and. Um, you're running all your rerun stuff, and you 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 really you were talking about how you're in a new where, warehouse, um, and how's how's everything going with rerun? And for people that don't know about rerun, you are just explain it real quickly what you're doing, um, and also how to get involved. Yeah, so I mean, rerun. It, our kind of our mission. No, our mission doesn't change. It just changes a, a little bit. We we're, we're what we're trying to do is highlight, um, especially in running, and I suppose as well in in, in the other sports industries that there's that we, especially like running's not as environmentally friendly as we like believe it to be. You know, there's a there's a lot of waste, there's a lot of overconsumption, um, there's a lot of needless buying, and uh, especially with like the textiles and the shoes, it's it's like um, like is running and the equipment's as bad as like the fast fashion you get in like Primark mm. and these uh these these shops. So yeah, we just try and highlight that amongst runners and and it kind of then it kind of spreads out across society, you know, just to like we wanna we wanna do well for the for the earth and, and we like consume it's about like needless consumption. Like don't consume too much, you know, like we push messages about people making their their kit last as long as possible and not buying stuff if they don't need it. Um, yeah, and it's going well. It's going well. In fact, I was running in like these. I had these really old like cotton race finishers t-shirts, but I t- I tied I dyed them with um, just experimenting. Like, there's so many hideous chemicals that go into our clothing. I'm just like learning about that at the moment and how, especially sports clothing, synthetic polyester and, and how as athletes, when you wear this clothing and you sweat in it, that you're absorbing all these hideous carcinogens and, and toxins. So, wow. so I dyed those tops with like turmeric and this madaru and, uh, like beat true and so like natural things in the thing like if I'm going to absorb anything then I might as well be absorbing things that are like good for me so like turmeric's like anti-inflammatory yeah wow roots and yeah, anti-inflammatory wow. so it was quite nice because it's a natural dye and as I was running and sweating you could see that it was like the dye was like fading so I was taking some of it into my like in in through my skin you know so um yeah it's uh it was it's it's been quite fun like practicing like using all these different natural things to dye uh to dye clothes how were how old were your runners that you were running it in as well uh so it was just i ran in i don't really they were just my shoes and they were just like yeah i mean I, don't, I had like three pairs that I was swapping in and out of, um, you know, maybe they were like maybe one, yeah, year, year and a half old or something. The, the ones that I was running in, yeah. Which is um, going to be a lot of yeah, kilometers they, as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, you don't. I think we talked about it before. You don't really need to change that much. There was one point when um, Robbie, uh, my my mate and my coach, was was saying that maybe I needed a bit more support and he had this old these old pair of trainers that he had and he said look where they were like the ones with the big like wedge on the bottom and he was like wear these uh give them a go you know it might be might be good for you and I put them on 
and he, I'm like size seven and a half, and he's like size ten. So we're like two and a half sizes <laughs> too big for me. And um, and I tripped over like on the dual carriageway like four times in an hour, just like falling flat on my face because it was like it was like wearing clown shoes. Yeah. That, um, so we took them off. And it didn't last that that long. And in fact, the only thing that that still hurts more than anything is that my after like it's about four weeks or something is my elbow which i landed on those four times it's still still killing me yeah so, i was just looking yeah. around for um i was just looking around for my running shoes because i've i've now like every time i've looked down at my shoes that i've been running in i've been like listen to dan listen to dan like don't change them you, you're going all right don't change them fix you don't fix the shoe and um and i'm i'm staying with them like i'm staying with them like i'm fine yeah. i think there's probably the the actual soul i'm actually uh running through the sole of the shoe now because because i'm throwing oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm throwing yeah. so many cricket balls or i'm i'm throwing balls at, at players and and um in training my front toes coming out the front as well because i'm bowling in them as well so it's taking a little bit of a battering i don't know how much longer they're gonna they're gonna go until my toes coming out the front but uh, every time can you yeah 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 you can in fact at rerun we we got some funding to get a like a cobbler's machine so that's my next thing like i'm learning to resole uh, trainers, yeah. So we can re a lot of the ones we get donated where the souls have gone, we'll resole them and then they can be used again. Yeah. So then, what about like my toe coming out if at the I'm... end? What 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 would what would I put on? At the, like stitch more material around it. Yeah, you can stitch. You can. I've been using with, with things like that. It depends. It depends how big the hole is because, like, sometimes where I've been embroidering, like I do a nice that you can a nice pattern with embroidery if it's only a little bit you can do that or before like i've used t-shirts like old race t-shirts and like sewn them over the top um and that works yeah it's a pity you're not closer and you could send it to me and i could uh, yeah and i could i could, <laughs> I could send it back to you. get more snazzed up yeah i definitely would well maybe if i'm yeah. maybe when i'm coming back next year i'll send you i'll keep these shoes on me and i'll make Good. sure yeah, that, dan, that dan, them as well. dan gets them uh how many people have you got yeah. there with you at rerun now i keep seeing stuff uh, so coming up just, there's people there oh yeah so it's, it's me and charlotte and and actually our youngest daughter yeah, starts she starts an apprenticeship with us in like a, a week's time so she she's she's on board now and she's uh like awesome. looking after our we have like a thing called the shoe bank which is like a food bank where uh if runners don't have enough where if they're from like in financial difficulty or they just don't have enough money coming in and they want to run then they can uh come to us and we'll give them free like free kit uh we get seconds and like samples given to us by brands and uh running shops so we give them basically we give them a new kit with like a slight you know there might be a slight defect there might be a tiny little stain on the shirt or something so so yeah my Ruby, my daughter's in, in charge of that so yeah it's cool it's going well awesome mate look um thank you so much for your time like, i love catching up with you i love talking about this sort of stuff i think uh I think what you're doing at reruns awesome. Uh, obviously, what you do running wise is awesome. Um, and have you got anything on the horizon that you're you're thinking of tackling? Um, I don't know. I yeah, maybe next year. I'd really like to run um, uh, another six day race and try and try and go above the thousand kilometer um, kind of wow. barrier. Yeah. So. So that might be, yeah, my uh, my plan for next year. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll definitely catch up for you for that then, for sure. Yeah. All right, Dan. Thank you cool, so much, mate. Take take care. You, Have a good rest of the day. Yeah. yeah. See you later, man. Okay. Cheers, mate. Right. Cheers, man. Bye. Cheers, buddy.